Él es Jeremy Renner. Yeah. Good morning. Well, I would like to start this. Okay, you'll need it later, I think. Later, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I would like to start this press conference by asking you: What was your physical preparation for this role? What kind of things did you have to learn to play Iron Cross? Kind of what I'm doing now: stretching, a lot of stretching, a lot of fighting. So about a year and a half. Um, inadvertently, um, from Mission Impossible to Hans and Gretel with Avengers and it being sort of training ground, inadvertently to Bourne. Um, I only had really three weeks between Avengers and, and uh, Bourne to really start training, fighting specifically for uh, the movie. But um, really, every day was just about preparing my body to not get injured. The most important thing, obviously, if I get injured, there's no second string to come in and be able to take over. Um, that's something that uh, Mr. Cruz taught me. Okay. So now you, I think you're going to need that thing. So we're going to start with the press conference and the questions. Vamos a empezar con las preguntas. La primera es de Ángel Martínez de tu cine VIP. ¿Dónde estás, Ángel? Ah, muy bien. Ahí va el micrófono. Este, ¿Cuáles son las principales diferencias que, que usted nota entre este reboot, este nuevo inicio de la saga y la, pra, y la saga previa de Paul Greengrass, Paul Greengrass y Matt Damon? Bueno, well, no sé, creo que son muy... Gracias. Muy diferentes y similares. Tenemos un diferente cast. Tenemos la continuidad de Tony Gilroy, que es Ray past three films has been involved in um, since the beginnings. Um, he had to really come up with the idea that really the clever sort of high concept of how to sort of continue the story. We kind of sort of run run out of rope with Jason Bourne's sort of plight of trying to figure out who he is, right? So they just pulled back the lens essentially to see that there's a deeper conspiracy, that there's a, been a puppeteer on a higher level that's played by Edward Norton. And so like Treadstone birth Jason Bourne, there was also other agents within Treadstone. There's also other sister companies, if you will, um, outcome, which is where Aaron Cross, my character, comes out of it. And there are several agents that come out of that. So we just really realize that there's, there's a lot more going on. Um, what is continuous is you'll see that Bourne Old Maiden is playing the background continually that everything that is happening in Ultimatum is really affecting everything that's happening in this movie, which I thought was actually a very clever um, way to, without having to over-explain things. Um, that's, that's the main differences, I, I suppose, and, and similarities. Muy bien, la, segunda, la siguiente pregunta es de Erendira Rivera, de Eres. Hola, Jeremy. Eh, si te pueden acercar un micrófono, por favor. Gracias. Gracias. Hola Jeremy, bienvenido a México. Eh, a mí me gustaría saber si El Legado Born es tu película más importante hasta la fecha y también eh, saber si es cierto lo que se publicó esta mañana de que tienes planes de trabajar con eh, Alonso Cuarón. Muchas gracias. Um. I don't know how to put importance on any other job. I suppose there's a lot of responsibility, might be a better word. Um, there's a lot more responsibility. The level of importance, I feel like every job is important. You're asking me to choose between my children, essentially. It's like I, I love every job that I do, and I think they're all very, very important. You know? And But there's a bigger responsibility that's come with this, and, um, and I've been welcoming that. It's, it's been quite lovely. And Alfonso and I, um, I just talked to him yesterday, and um, I'm a huge fan of him and doing due diligence to try to do something with him sometime in the near future. Um, but uh, we have nothing nothing in the works, nothing planned as of, as of yet. Muy bien. Siguiente pregunta es de Montserrat Rome de Televisa. Hola, buenos días. Hi. <laughs> Bienvenida a México. 
Tus últimas películas te han perfilado como un héroe de acción. ¿Es el género en el que te sientes más cómodo y qué otros te gustaría explorar? It's it's only yeah action movies have been yeah my last four movies and very blessed and lucky to have those um, never would have signed up for them um, if they came didn't come to be the way they did it's it just sort of inadvertently happened that way um, I've been been working for thank goodness for the last 20 years and now I just stepped into action movies and hope to continue to step into other challenging sort of uh, Characters, if you will, it doesn't matter really the type of movie that is, it's just the character that's really the most important. Vamos a encender el micrófono. ¿Qué pasa? ¿No se oye? Hola. ¿Ya? Ya. ¿Qué te atrapó del personaje de Legado Born? Well, I'm a big fan of the franchise. Um, I love that kind of filmmaking. And I love the level of authenticity. It's, it's reminiscent of my favorite movies growing up, like The French Connection, um, where, where the um, attention is put upon on the character and the plight of, of a character. And Bourne series has its in spades, and as well as it, it's continued into Bourne Legacy with, with Aaron Cross, it, it just felt like it was, it was very complex and it had great physical challenges. And I got to work with some of my mentors, um, uh, Rachel Weiss and Edward Morton, and um, uh, a new fan um, uh, that I am of, of Oscar Isaac. Jorge Antonio Martínez de Cico Cinema. Hola, ¿qué tal? Bueno, bueno. Yeah. Hola, ¿qué tal? Bienvenida a México, Jeremy. Hola, Ángel. Tenía dos preguntas para ti. Una, ¿qué tipo de entrenamiento tuviste que tener para la persecución de motos al final de la película? Y la otra es si te gustaría hacer otra película de Warren, pero también con Matt Damon. Gracias. Uh, training was pretty much in a parking lot uh, in Manila, just to have Rachel in the back to get her used to what we were going to be doing, and then just so I can get used to the weight of her, and not that. that She's heavy. It's just, it's a very, very light bike that I wasn't used to. I've been riding since I was 19, but big, heavy street bikes. So riding a dual sport or motocross bike is very, very different. And um, I just had to get used to that. So we just kind of banged around in the parking lot, did some wheelies, and um, she didn't freak out too much. And uh, so we went for it. And then as far as uh, any, you know, working with, with Matt in the future, I mean, I, I, I would, open to that idea, I'm very welcoming to that idea. I'm a big fan of this, and we've always chatted about wanting to work together. It could be in the series, it could not be. Um, that's what I find most exciting about this, this movie and this series, that leave it up to the fans, really, the audiences, to, to dictate kind of where we go, if we go again, and then, and then which direction we go. There's many avenues I think we can explore. La siguiente pregunta es de Mario Colina de Reforma. Hola, hola. Eh, sí, eh, quisiera preguntarle a Jeremy sobre eh, The Hold Locker, la, la película que pues, quizá eh, sea la que lo lanzó al estrellar. Quisiera preguntarle qué recuerdos tiene de haber trabajado con Catherine Bigelow y qué opinión tiene de que eh, en la industria hollywoodense las cineastas mujeres eh, escaseen. ¿A qué, ¿A qué cree que se debe? ¿Y se siente que deberían haber eh, pues, más cineastas mujeres? Uh, I love women filmmakers. I've got to work with five or six at this point, and it's a great, it's a great blessing, really. It's interesting to see the differences in how... It's not even really a gender thing. If you look at Catherine's movies, there's nothing feminine about those movies. Um, it's just... I, I never look at it as a gender thing. It's just... Um, there might be a... It's just a different perspective. It's a different set of eyeballs. I, that's how I see it. Uh, working with Catherine was um, a wonderful experience for me. Um, she is a painter. She is an observer, and that's kind of how I like to be directed. I remember our first meeting was 
I'm not going to tell you how to do your job, and it's good because I'm not going to tell you how to do yours. So um, she kind of just let me go do my thing, and she just kind of observed and watched, and it ended up being quite a, a great relationship. And uh, uh, what was it? We were talking about women directors. What else was the other one? Uh, the, the other part of the question, I think it was, uh, if you think there, there need, we need more women oh, Do we need more? Yeah, I'm always welcoming of that. Lynn Ramsey is another young young female director that I'm, I'm hoping to work with. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm always a big fan of female directors, for sure. La siguiente pregunta es de Omar Ramos, de Milenio. Hola, Jeremy. Bueno, bueno. Hola, Jeremy. Bienvenido a México. Uh, si hacemos cuentas, vienen una o dos películas más de The Avengers. Seguramente vendrá alguna secuela de The Born Legacy. Así que, ¿qué se siente tener todo este trabajo por adelantado? Y mi segunda pregunta es sobre tus nominaciones al Oscar. ¿Cómo te hicieron sentir? Well, that's a lot of feelings, I guess, I'm supposed to have here. Um, wow, that's, that's a lot. Um, I don't have a crystal ball, but yeah, one could assume they, they might make another Avengers movie, because I guess a few people saw that thing, right? <laughs> um, I don't know my part in it, I don't know anything about it creatively, you know probably as much as I do. I read online that Joss is going to write and direct another one. So, I, I'm just as uninformed as, as all y'all are. Um, but it's exciting. Um, look, man, to answer your question about working and having, knowing that you might have some jobs in the future, it's like, that's a fantastic feeling for an actor where 2% of actors are actually working um, in a job market in the US economy where most people are struggling just to get a job. So, yeah, does that feel good? Yeah. Does it feel kind of terrible at the same time? Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, I'm happy to, to uh, and blessed to, to do my job and my part. And getting nominated for an Academy Award is, is probably one of the greatest feelings you can have, is being recognized by your peers for something you're very proud of. And I got to take my mom as my date. It was a great celebration for me, and a wonderful um, milestone for me in my life that I'll never forget. La siguiente pregunta es de Natalia Cano, de APE. Hola, ¿qué tal? Good Buenas morning, welcome to Mexico. Thank you so much. I feel very welcome, thank you. <laughs> eh, mi pregunta va dirigida a, en el sentido de, ¿qué le aportó eh, especialmente en este personaje, en esta película? Porque, bueno, él ha hablado en anteriores ocasiones de que le atraen los personajes fallos, muy al estilo de Shakespeare, con héroes imperfectos y villanos simpáticos. Y bueno, por otro lado, eh, lo acaba de mencionar él, pero este primer contacto con Alfonso Cuarón, ¿qué atributos eh, ve en, en este cineasta mexicano como para querer trabajar con él? Obviamente es un prolífico cineasta, pero bueno, él particularmente que ve Cuarón. Gracias. Can I give you guys just like one shot of the mic? Because you need to give me like 19 questions. <laughs> like I have to remember all this stuff. You need to start writing this down. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll... Alfonso Corona. The first part is like uh, my part in The Born, what I had to contribute to that. Um, well, I don't know. It's, isn't it my job to sort of make something two dimensional, three dimensional? Make something that's intelligent, also emotionally intelligent. Um, I don't know. It changes from job to job. This one. I had overcome physical requirements, um, as well as um, a greater understanding of how I could help the director tell the story. That's just, I don't, I don't want to bore you with sitting here telling you how I do my job. It's, I, I couldn't even tell you really, elo eloquently anyway. I just do it. Um, but I am a big believer in, 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 like you said, in mythology. And I think there are only 12 stories to be told. We just retell them over and over and over again over the years in very different ways. And Shakespeare is something uh, I really believe in to where heroes need to be flawed and villains need to have some form of empathy or sympathy. Um, if they don't, I'm not interested in that film. And I think The Born Legacy has that for sure. I think Aaron Cross is very flawed and I think Bayer, if you want to call him the villain, is um, 
not twisting his mustache, if you will. Now, Fonzo Caron, you know, what can I say about him, man? He's, uh, he's, he's a master, and you know, there's a lot, a lot of masterful directors that come out of Mexico. Um, I happened to run into him um, for dinner, and we ended up getting along straight away, and um, we're still looking to, to do something together. I, I don't know, I feel like, you know, it's, it's kind of like dating, I suppose, if you will, you know? Why do, you, why do you like somebody? Why do you not like somebody? It's like, I like this guy's work. He likes me for some reason. And uh, I don't know. Guillermo de Toro is another guy um, who uh, I've, I've loved for so long. You know, his films are tremendous. He's got a movie coming out that's going to knock your socks off. Um, but yeah, I just like working with smart, interesting, kick ass people. That's simple. Pamela Cortés de Sexenio. Gracias. Ok, este, he leído que también eres un músico muy talentoso. Este, ¿Tienes planes de explotar esta faceta a futuro o tal vez grabar un disco o algo en la música? Uh, my interest in music is solely just really for me. It's a very selfish thing. So, so, so it allows me to explore parts of me. It's also math, it's my brain kind of moving and kicking and gets the dust off. Um, I don't require anybody, anything for music. Just an instrument, myself. Something really quite peaceful and lovely about that. Outside of making music for other people, yeah, I, I do and I play out, but I don't have the time necessarily to, to record and do all the things I'd like to do. Um, perhaps maybe in film it would happen someday. I would certainly welcome that idea. Daniela Guzmán de Rock 101. Aquí al frente. Gracias. Hola, Jeremy. Hola. Hace rato mencionaba sobre las cosas que se leen online. Y me, nos gusta, bueno, a mí me gustaría saber eh, tu experiencia con Twitter. ¿Cómo ha sido como la reacción de los fans que han tenido desde que se estrenó esta película y antes de school that way. I don't really um, pay attention to that kind of stuff. I know it, it, it's really kind of important in a lot of ways, just not in my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I don't think I have anything to say in 180 characters or less that's really that interesting, so I choose not to tweet. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I'm not sure of, of what, what that is. I do have like sisters and stuff that kind of uh, follow that. And that will kind of whisper in my ear every once in a while, like, oh, you got some fans and people that run my like, websites and stuff for me. But I, I don't, I like people. And I like looking people in the eye when I talk to them. That's why I don't even like to talk on the cell phone. So technology and I don't get along. Well, uh, talking again about The Born Legacy, I would like to ask you, I know you, you shoot in, in a lot of places like Manila and stuff. So I wanted to ask you your experience about that. And uh, how was it like to shoot in the mountains as well? Uh, shooting in Manila and shooting in the mountains? Yeah. Well, you know, look, the, 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 this kind of movie is where the, the locations are, are kind of a character in the movie. It's, it's nice to shoot in locations where, as an actor, it informs you, like, it's, that is what it is. That is a, when a movie is based on authenticity and truth, As an actor, that's all we strive for, is truth and authenticity and being real, right? So you have everything around you and surroundings that just helps you, make, makes your job easier. Now, don't get me wrong, shooting in Manila was not easy. It, it was um, um, kind of hard in, in, on, a, on my soul in a lot of ways. You know, I saw such poverty that I, I don't know if I could really process it even still to this day. But then I saw such beauty in the islands. We were able to, to immerse ourselves into the community as much as we possibly could. And shooting in Manila, I found that the, you know, people always make a place. No matter your architecture, no matter if you're on an island, no matter if you're in the mountains. But people always make a place to me. And they have such a beautiful, smiling face, always, under any adversity. And there's something really quite lovely about that and inspiring. 
Um, that was my experience in Manila. And then a more sort of favorite location was um, in the mountains because it's quiet, peaceful, alone. It's Christmas time, it's snowing. Um, there's literally a handful of crew that we had. It's just me and a really itchy beard and the cold water. And uh, you know, it was a good time though. So short-lived and uh, I really enjoyed shooting the, the Rockies. Vámonos con Jimena García del Gráfico. Acá. Gracias. Hola. Este, tu siguiente proyecto es Hansel y Gretel, Cazadores de Brujas. ¿Qué nos puedes contar de esta película? Ah, sí. Yes, yeah, that's... I shot that right after Mission. And um, it's been a while since I've seen it. But I, I do know that... Wow, it's a lot of fun, I'll tell you that. For us, it comes out in the States beginning of January. I'm not sure when here. Um, it may be the same. Um, but it essentially takes the grim fairy tale. Now, I, I thought, maybe I'm crazy, but I thought fairy tales always had a happy ending. But what I learned is that not only are they unhappy, they're quite miserable. Um, where we left Hans from Gretel, uh, in the group fairy tale is they almost got eaten by a witch and then they ended up killing her. So we take this, the end by the way, and then we take this tale 15 years later and their animosity and anger towards witches and they become bounty hunters and uh, kill witches for a living. And it has a, you know, it's sort of, I want to say fairy tale world. It's, uh, it's got a, it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's a lot of fun. It is, it is an R-rated movie so it wouldn't have like little kids go to it. But um, it certainly is a, is a, is a good, good fun ride. Omar Reyes de Televisa. I wonder what animal they killed to, to make this work. Is this a crazy looking thing? Some sort of <laughs> gerbil? It's like a giant zebra. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Jeremy, eh, revisando tu filmografía, tienes personajes muy interesantes y poderosos. ¿A cuál de esos personajes extraña más, extrañas más y te sientes más apegado a él? ¿Qué te gustaría volver a, a repetir o a vivir la experiencia? ¿Aquel de The Town, violento pero tan fraternal? ¿De Hurt Locker, con esa moral por el país? ¿O este de Llegado Burn, que también tiene un peso específico en cuanto a ideales? ¿A cuál de ellos te gustaría regresar y extrañas más? Well, sometimes I have a choice in that. Sometimes I don't. Um, I don't usually I like to put them to bed. There's usually not a case where you ever get an opportunity to revisit a character. Um, outside of doing theater is kind of the only way you do that. And that's where I came from. But I don't know if there's any, any I, I kind of put it to bed. Once I finish the job, I, I don't even want to really see the movie more than once anyway. I don't let that go, you know. Shove the child off up to college. You know? Go, go, go! Enjoy your life. You know? <laughs> so I, I kind of birthed that. Um, I probably will have to revisit, you know, Hawkeye um, and a few others, which I, I'm welcoming because um, there's a lot more to explore there, I think. But um, like, I'm not interested in wondering what Jeffrey Dahmer is doing right now. I'm not interested in. Huh? I think we should let them all die for me. They're all fine. Let them all put them to bed. Jorge Mendoza del Universal. Buenos días. Quiero preguntarle al señor. Eh, usted hace sus propias escenas de acción. ¿Alguna vez ha estado su vida en peligro o ha sentido que, que lo estuvo por hacer alguna escena peligrosa? Cuéntenos. Working, no, I don't, I don't feel like ever in my life's in danger. I mean, there's probably danger of really getting hurt. But I never feel like I'm going to die. Well, let me take that. There was a moment where I, I thought that, well, this, this could really suck. Um, in, in Mission Impossible, hanging out over the building, holding on to Tom as he's hanging out the building. That, that was, um, I don't like heights, really. No. 
and then something when you're up so high, it doesn't even feel like it's heights anymore. It just, I just feel like, yeah, that this could go really wrong. And all that is is just fear saying like, oh, wow, you know. I thought the worst case scenario, I feel like I could have made, it was so high up, I could make a few phone calls on the way now before I splat it. So, you know, it wasn't such a big deal, was it? Cintia Mondragón de Actitud, perdón, no, no, no entiendo muy bien quién. Eh, ¿Dónde estás, Cintia? Ah, perdón, perdón, es que está como escrito raramente aquí en medio, ¿lo puedes decir, por favor? Hi, I'm Cintia from Actitud. Hola. Eh, cuando decidiste hacer el legado Born, ¿no tenías miedo de ser comparado con Matt Damon? Y la segunda pregunta es, ¿quién es tu héroe de acción favorito? No, I was not afraid of being compared to, to, to Matt Damon at all. We're, we're very we're different characters. Um, I know the comparison is going to be drawn, and will be drawn, will always continually be drawn. But that's not my problem. That's not something I, can, I have to worry about. I had to worry about helping the director tell his story. Um, I'm not really good at walking around with <laughs> things I can't control in my head and in my life, so I kind of push them away. So compare me as you like, but, um, you know, that's not my issue. Um, and what was the other question? What was the other question? My favorite action hero, oh, yeah. Bruce Lee. If you call him an action hero, I suppose. But yeah, Bruce Lee is, a, is my favorite first kind of growing up. Víctor Bustos del Universal. Eh, Jeremy, ¿qué tal? Eh, hay actores que logran un papel en una película exitosa y son encasillados en ella. Y sin embargo, tú no solamente has logrado estar en películas exitosas, sino tres franquicias diferentes y que han resultado un buen negocio. ¿Cómo haces tú para, para hacer, eh, no encasillarte en, en uno de estos papeles? poder hacer otras cosas y qué le aporta diferente a cada papel. Yeah, I think that's a nightmare for kind of any actor, isn't it? Or just any human. It's like, who wants to be labeled as something or pigeonholed as something? I don't know, isn't that just other people's perception anyway? So I just feel like as an actor, I avoid it by making choices. And there are heartfelt, well thought out choices that drive me to want to skip to work every day. It's not, oh, I did that already, I'm going to go do this instead. It's that I really enjoy this character, I really enjoy working with these people, I have a lot to learn here, I can't wait to go to work. Um, it's just making choices. Um, that's, that's all my job is, is making choices. Vámonos con la última pregunta. Esta es de Fernando Gae de TV Azteca. Sería la. Hola, Gaby. Hola, Jerry. Eh, bienvenido a México y me gustaría preguntarte: hace rato hablabas sobre cómo te hizo sentir estar nominado en dos ocasiones al Oscar. Hace poco tuvimos un mexicano que también estuvo nominado y me gustaría saber si te cambia la vida y de qué manera te cambia profesionalmente estar nominado al Oscar. Well, I, it's something that can't be taken away, my friend. And there's a lot of power that lies within that as an artist. And it's affected my life in, in, in many ways. And I feel um, settled in some ways and, and very unsettled in other ways. I, you know, there's the obvious things where, yeah, you get more opportunities. And, scripts and more um, interesting directors to meet and blah 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 there's a lot of things in the business but I mean, if that's what we can really talk about that it's like okay yeah I get I don't know how many more scripts but yeah more opportunities and what a great sort of place to be uh, for, for any actor Jeremy thank you very much for your time this morning thank you for visiting us and gracias a todos ustedes por habernos acompañado en esta conferencia de prensa enjoy your stay in Mexico Thank you very much. Have a good day, y'all.